So today I received my wideband and boost gauge in the mail from APS Wideband. You can find their link in the description, check them out. They have very, very well priced gear for this sort of application and it's very cool because their wideband system is actually just a simple screen and you can set it in the cluster. So I'll have a video of me doing that and it provides a very clean install. So I got a whole bunch of stickers with it. Probably put them on the car somewhere. But here's the important part. See the logo right there. If I can get this open. Some more stickers. Some literature. Now, I got their D1 system, which is a, quite a simple wideband controller. Here's the actual readout, the digital readout that I put in the cluster, along with their actual module and connectors. But it comes with a, a Bosch wideband O2 sensor, so it's not like it's, it's a cheap knockoff version. It's a, it's a very high quality part complete with all the the right sensors and O2 bung and etc. Now let's look at the boost gauge. So here we go. Pretty simple, nice and minimalistic. Essentially I'll just sit that in a the OB the onboard computer delete panel that I'm getting. I'll sit that in there and then run the boost line and I'll get a good readout on my boost. So that's it guys, it's pretty simple, you know, it's not a it's not crazy complicated. You know, it's just a, a wide band and then a module to or a wide band O2 sensor and then a module to read it out and then a display. So you can't really go wrong with this. I'll do a full review on everything. And uh, I look forward to in the install. Here's a little display that goes in the, the cluster. Very minimalistic. I really like that because I do want this car to be sort of sleeperish, sort of understated, but I want it to be incredibly fast. And I don't want big pods everywhere and then get pulled over and have it be a mess. So. This is actually what runs into the cabin. Now these wires will connect to the gauge itself and I will connect them to my uh, plug and play. So this, this will connect to the gauge and the plug and play. Analog is white, narrow band is brown, digital is green, 12 volt power, plus is red, and ground is black. So what's going to happen is I'll run the red and the red together to a 12 volt switched power, and the black and the black together again to a ground. And then the green will output to my screen, which will read a digital display, and the white and brown will output to my mega squirt. After making sure everything was clear of this and I didn't drill straight into my wiring harness, I'm clear to proceed. So all I'm gonna do now is take this 
wrapped up Phillips head screwdriver with the wiring attached. And I'll simply push it through the hole I made in the firewall boot. Okay, so I pulled the wide band wires through. Now I want to reiterate, you need to be extremely careful when drilling next to this wiring harness. I actually nicked the shielding on it. So I'm going to tape that all up. But if I did this again, and I actually suggest that you don't do it here, you drill a new hole through the firewall and wire it through that way. All right, here is my boost gauge vacuum line. I'll attach this to the manifold so I get accurate pressure reading. Here's my O2 sensor, sort of female side with the module on it. That's ran through the firewall. So now I just have to splice into my O2 sensor and it's getting kind of dark out so I might have to do this another day. So after a little troubleshooting I found out that my ground from the O2 harness was not as good so I took the uh, O2 and boost gauge and all that, grounded it to the strut tower. This is the actual point where the ECU grounds and I ran over. And I wired in a 12 volt switch from the fuse block on this side with an inline fuse in here. And that runs over there, runs in the firewall. So I'll pretty much take this opportunity to show off my handiwork. What I've done is I've installed that little uh, screen unit from the wideband system into where the check light was can't really see it but it'll be visible when it light, lights up. I just had to take the check thing out, remove the bulb and place it in there and trim a little bit of plastic and it comes right out where the bulb goes in and I get this pigtail to plug into the harness. So now I'll reinstall my, my cluster and I'll configure the O2 sensor and then I can start it. This might be kind of hard to see because there's no light in here but this is a uh, just a, a laser cut piece of plastic that goes in where the onboard computer was. So right here, you just remove the onboard computer, four screws in the back, pull that out, run all your, uh, your boost gauge through it. This is my APSX boost gauge. I'm just installing it now. Uh, you can see the, the boost line, the power cables, that all runs to the same as the uh, down there to the power, the 12 volt, the digital from the readout. Er, it's all that same power, but it's not the same system. So you can have this individual without the APSX wideband, and you can have the wideband without the boost gauge, that sort of thing. But this I just picked up from a from one of the guys on the forums. I believe his name is Jay Wood, or his, his uh, Rev Limited forum name is Jay Wood. I'll put a, a link in the description to his email and that sort of stuff, because this, this stuff is hard to find. Like, they had an old dead thread with these on it, and I looked through it, and I was trying to figure out who makes them now, and it seemed like every couple of years, the person who would make them was changed, so. I narrowed down who it was, I found these, and you can get them too. So right now I'm just taking some epoxy and I'm going to run this boost gauge up into this, this delete panel. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a dab of epoxy, keep it in place, and then I can put it up in there and we'll have a functional boost gauge that'll be real clean. So with all the wiring sort of worked out. I got the cluster wiring in, I've got the boost gauge wiring in, all the APSX stuff wired together to a shared 12 volt, black to black, red to red, you know, pretty simple stuff. Here's the uh, boost gauge in all of its glory. That'll sit back in there a bit. 
wideband sitting in there. All looks pretty clean. Now I haven't tried to let's give it. Here we go. Got my wide band in there, you can see the display. Looks great. Boost gauge. Reading vacuum, that's not even hooked up to anything, so. Um, I just have to calibrate that system. Maybe calibrate this boost gauge, figure out what's going on with that. But there it is, guys. That's my APSX Y band and APSX boost gauge install. Pretty easy. All I have to do now is run this uh, boost line to my manifold. So the calibration method on this APSX wideband is fairly simple. You have your uh, display installed, you give it power, see mine's in my gauge cluster, look at that, and then it will flash this AO for a little bit and give it a couple of seconds. changes to 19 and that means it's ready for calibration. So then you simply take a magnet to the corner of it with the sensor out in the air until it flashes A6 and then you let go. So now it's counting to A6 and it's calibrating with the Bosch sensor in the air to a set te uh, mixture that it knows normal air is. And once it gets fully calibrated you can install your Bosch O2 sensor and then you will have a calibrated system that will be your white band and you'll get accurate air fuel measurements. So now that it says, or now that it's displaying 19 on the system, it is correctly calibrated and it is ready for use. So now that I have everything wired, I can install my Bosch wideband O2 sensor that came with my APS wideband kit. It's essentially just a direct fit into the original O2 hole. Now if I were using the original computer, I would have to pretty much wait until I had my downpipe complete and then I would have the original bung and the aftermarket bung with the wide band in one and the narrow band in the other so the narrow band could run the computer and my wide band could be used for tuning but seeing as I'm using the plug and play I simply splice into the original O2 harness install the new O2 in the old bung and it replaces the narrow band plus I gain wide band capabilities